don't need a high-end designer or a lot of money to get a luxe look. Be your own interior designer. This is Affordable Interior Design, the podcast. Here's your host, Betsy Hellman. Happy holiday season! I hope you guys are enjoying this time of year, staying warm, having cocoa, maybe spiked with Baileys, uh, enjoying the fire, enjoying friends, family. For me, it's like a whirlwind. From mid-November to end of December, it all goes so quickly, like I'm just going down a slide at a playground. It just seems to speed up as the days go by, and I never have enough time for shopping. I never have enough time to savor and stop and say, wow, you know, it's what makes the cold worth it for me, and it goes too quickly, and then I have two to three months of more cold. I wish that there was like two months between Thanksgiving and Christmas so I could really enjoy, spread it out, have the tree up for longer, get my pacing right with the ordering of presents, which never seems to quite pan out, and then I'm paying for last minute shipping. I mean, I mean, all the things, guys, all the things. But I hope that you're enjoying. I hope you're finding time to go to a tree lighting or a menorah lighting or just um, take a moment. I'm looking forward to taking a moment. And, you know, this whole holiday season in my new house, I've only burned a fire twice. But one of the things on my bucket list. And this was a dream. This was a nice to have, not a must have. Most of the houses I saw did not have this. This house has this. I have a fireplace in my primary bedroom and I am a fireplace junkie and lighting that and curling up under the covers with my husband and watching bad TV while we giggle and eat chips in bed has just been the realization of a lifelong dream. And even though I've only done it one time this past weekend, it will be recreated. (laughs) Yes, it will be because we basically told the kids, you're on your own at 930 on a Saturday night. We are no longer parenting you. We closed the door. We turned on bad TV. We lit a dura flame and it was like being on vacation, sort of, sort of, right? Vacation with unfolded laundry at your feet, but whatever, you know, you get the idea. Uh, it's just so nice when something that you thought that you were going to love and wish you would have finally comes into your life and it's even better than you thought. I feel the same way about the jetted tub that's in my primary bedroom. Always dreamed, never had. It's better than I ever could have imagined. There we go. Uh, I hope you're finding things to savor this holiday season. Two people that are going to savor something special, a gift from me to them, are people who won our review contest. As you remember in November, I encourage you guys to go over to iTunes and leave a review. Well, I have two winners from that contest who are going to be receiving my online class about feng shui. So let me share the reviews and share their names so they can shoot me an email at betsy at uploft.com. Once again, that's betsy, B-E-T-S-Y at uploft, U-P-L-O-F-T dot com. If you hear your handle, be sure to send me an email so that I can get your email and send you this class. Drum roll, please. The first winner is Lamel78, Lamel78, and he or she writes, I love listening each week. Betsy is always giving out the best advice. When she solves people's dilemmas, it's a mix of comedy and well-thought-out solutions. Her book is a must-read if interior design interests you. And guys, if interior design interests you or somebody you know and love, it is the perfect thing to give as a gift. You can go to the website, affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes if you want to give the classes with the book or slash book if you just want to give the book and I will wrap it up for you and send it right out in the mail so you will get it in time for the upcoming holidays. All right, so Lamel78, send me an email so I can get you your free class. And the other person who has won the review contest is Giver Not Gifter. Giver Not Gifter, please write me at betsy at uploft.com. Here is the review that you left. 
I am always learning something. Betsy is interesting, funny, and best of all, informative. She gives experienced advice, even if it's not following the popular trend. She answers listeners' questions as well as sharing her own decorating journey. Yes, I do, guys. Yes, I share. Open up the kimono and let you see what's going on in my own life because it is getting messy, dude. I am losing a little bit of hope as supply chain issues push lead times out further and further. I received two couches that I was so excited about for the formal living room. I splurged a little bit. They both came severely damaged. I mean, can nothing be easy? I have a list of returns that's so long due to things coming damaged, things coming not at all like they were described online. It's been as giver, not gifter writes, a journey. So thanks for traveling with me. Thanks for leaving these beautiful reviews. Guys, I am going to host another review challenge because this was so successful and I have other classes to give. So for the month of December, the review challenge is go to iTunes, leave a five-star review or better. Well, you can't leave better than five-star, but you know, in the comments you could write, I wish I could leave six or seven stars. Anyway, uh, leave a five-star review and you will be entered to win my Styling Your Home class. This one talks about artwork, pattern mixing, color palette. It is a must-have if you've got those primary pieces and just want to know how to make it look super designerly. Uh, I love this class and it's one of my most popular. So uh, I know you want to win it. You get this class, which is 45 minutes online and is typically a $40 value. You're going to get it for free by spending less than four minutes going to iTunes and leaving us a five-star review. All right, I will be announcing the winner at the beginning of January 2023. So you'll be on the edge of your seats waiting until I'm able to give a gift back to you. All right, speaking of giving to you, it's time for me to dig into the mailbag and give you some advice. My first question today comes from Indiana and Heidi is writing. Heidi says, my husband and I bought a one-bedroom country cottage, our full-time home, from the 1900s. We bought it two years ago and are slowly renovating what's necessary and touching up the rest with paint, light fixtures, and small updates. We started with the kitchen, which was the room that was in the worst shape. We replaced the cabinets, the flooring, repaired the walls, and now I am to the decorating part. Yay! Yay! At the time of the renovation, I was into the gray phase, but I am not thrilled with it anymore. I've shifted to wanting more classic warm tones, and it would be more true to this old home. What color would you recommend that I paint the cabinets? How about the knobs? I'd love to hear your professional advice for this kitchen, which is my favorite place in the house. I'm looking for inexpensive touch-up recommendations. The walls are white and the countertop a marbled black. The ceiling and door trim has yet to be painted, but will be white. All right, Heidi, let's dig into these pictures. And guys, if you want to see Heidi's pictures, you'll want to follow us on YouTube. So we have an affordable interior design channel on YouTube. And just full disclosure, my son mocks me every day because he also has a channel on YouTube, Despicable Duck, if you're into Roblox and inane videos by teenagers, you'll not want to miss it because he puts one video up and an hour later he has like 1200 views and I put one video up and three weeks later I have 10 views and he likes to compare our channels. So he'll give me the update every day. He'll say, mom, I put a video up on Saturday and I already have 10,000 views. And he'll say, mom, you put a video up on Saturday and you have 12 views. (laughs) Now, I'm not saying I'm trying to beat my son. This is not a competition. But guys, come over and see Heidi's pictures. Subscribe to the YouTube channel so I can save face in front of my tween because he thinks he's a lot cooler than me. And I mean, I think it's been confirmed, but uh, I'd like to at least give him a small run for his money. So head over there, check out the pictures, see what I look like in person, uh, and make sure you subscribe. 
Okay. So Heidi, these pictures are very illuminating. I love that it feels so cozy. It truly does feel like a country kitchen. You've got some exposed shelves that are rustic wood. You've got white cabinetry on top with gray cabinetry on the bottom. You've got a woven light fixture above the sink and the sink looks to be a deep farmhouse sink, which I love. And then you've got stainless steel and black appliances. There's a lot going on in this small kitchen, especially with the beadboard ceiling. There's a lot going on. Uh, it's definitely got the farmhouse vibe. You know what I don't love for a farmhouse? And this is going to be controversial, but I do feel like the whole um, modern farmhouse is on its way out as well as the gray. So I'm going to say this with confidence. I never truly liked an all-white farmhouse. I don't think that pure white is innate to a house like this. I would highly recommend painting the walls a color because in addition to your stainless steel fridge, you have a white stove and you have a white freezer. And there's just too many tones of white that aren't exactly matching and so everything's looking a little off and it's certainly not looking luxe. So the number one thing I would do is paint these walls a tone. Even if it's just a warm beige or something like that, it will definitely help to warm up the kitchen and make it feel less in flux. Make it feel like you've started to make some choices. The other thing I don't love in the kitchen are the cropped curtains. I don't love curtains in a kitchen because they do tend to get greasy with the uh, stuff from the range and just, you know, foodstuffs in general. But here I just think that they look blousey and ill-fitting. I would be much more inclined to do a blind in this moment, and I think it would be a much cleaner look. I would also remove the drapes in front of the um, window above the faucet sink, excuse me, and turn that into a blind as well. I think it will look less baggy saggy. And right now there's a little bit too much going on for my tastes. Now let's get to the question you actually asked me, Heidi. You actually asked me what color you should paint the cabinetry. Now right now you have the uppers and lowers a different color. And I'm okay with that in a room that has a lot of cabinetry. It can break up that dense sort of block of one tone. But in this case, you have very few uppers, a lot of exposed shelving. And, you know, the lowers aren't that overwhelming in terms of quantity. I would make them the same. I would make them probably not white. I'm open to white actually, depending on the color of the walls. Um, cause I definitely want to move that away from white and maybe do that ceiling, the beadboard on the ceiling in the white. Uh, so yeah, white could work for both or something that I think would be more fun is to do like a color. I am seeing in here with these sort of ashy gray wood floors, I am seeing like a sage green. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Like a sage green or a gray blue. I'm a little bit over the navy and I think it would be too dark for this kitchen, which doesn't get a ton of natural light and seems to have just standard ceilings. But I really think a sage green would not only feel super country home, but would also add that touch of warmth you're hoping for because green, while classified as a cool color, does have yellow in it, which makes it warm. I think that would just be stunning. And then do some simple blinds and the off-white wall color that leads toward beige. And then I would reduce a little bit. In here, you have like hooks on sort of a hall tree on the side on some shiplap. Then you have a hook on the door. Then you have some hooks above the stove. Then you have a ladder that's holding baskets above the freezer. There's just a lot going on. And while I can appreciate the maximal feel of, say, a farmhouse, for me, it's starting to feel cluttered, especially with the open shelving across the room. Less is going to be more with open shelving, and less is going to be more in a smaller kitchen. 
Heidi, when you ask me a question, you always get a little bit more than you bargained for. So I hope that helped and I hope it gives you some ideas on how to move in a slightly different direction. Let's get to my next question. My next question comes from Chrissy. Chrissy is writing all the way from Wilson, North Carolina. She says, hi, Betsy, we're getting ready to remodel our 80s traditional kitchen to our beloved modern farmhouse style. Uh Uh-oh, Chrissy. Just don't listen to the question before, okay? Just just don't listen. Plug your ears. Um, It's going to be a complete gut, and I'm very nervous about it. The size of our kitchen is 11 feet by 18 feet, with the cabinets and appliances having to be placed down the 18 and 18 feet sides. Windows and or doors won't allow for anything to be put on our 11 foot sides. There's going to be no room for an island. I'm worried that it's going to look like an oversized galley kitchen. With our family growing by leaps and bounds, I was really hoping to have a bar area with stools, but because we can't fit in an island, that's just not an option. I've thought about putting I've thought about not pitting, excuse me, cabinets under our coffee bar and putting stools there considering we will have our coffee pot, canisters for coffee, sugar, etc. I am worried there will be little room left over for somebody to place their plates, silverware, and beverage. I did think about making it deeper instead of the average 25-inch countertop, opting for a 36-inch deep instead. The 36-inch will be the depth of our encased fridge, which will be on one side of the coffee bar, and our pantry, which is the same depth on the other side but I worry it won't look quite right. Please let me know what you think. Thank you. Well, Chrissy, I would be more able to let you know what I think if I could see some pictures, because right now it's all theoretical and certainly I can give you some advice about what people do do and what is the standard, but with pictures I can say, you know, let's buck the trend and let's do something different here or wait, let's go back to the conventional standards, right? Um... You can go deeper with a countertop, but I typically don't go any deeper than 30 inches. 36 inches is pretty severe and pretty deep. The other thing we want to think about is you mentioned that it's kind of got two sides with limited options in terms of windows, doors, and appliances, right? And you say you're worried that it's going to look like an oversized galley kitchen, but I think it is an oversized galley kitchen. One thing that really gets my goat is when people try and make a room something that it's not or say, you know, you've heard me say before on this podcast, like a lot of my clients live in studio apartments. Well, not a lot of them, but some of them, right? But a lot of times when I'm working with those clients in studio apartments, they'll say to me, Betsy, you know, it's one room, but I want it to feel like four different rooms. I want it to be a living room, a dining room. I want to put up partitions, maybe a curtain, maybe use a bookcase as a divider. And basically, they're in denial, right? They're trying to get this room that's one open space into something that's not innate to the space. And it's always going to feel artificial. It's going to look like they're trying to impose something architecturally that just doesn't go. And it kind of takes away the true essence of the studio apartment, which is one open space that feels cohesive and flows seamlessly. I wonder if you're not in a bit of denial about your galley kitchen as well. That's just something that popped into my head. You know, no matter how much we spend on a house, no matter how we renovate a house, there's always going to be things that we wish were different. I have mentioned this before, but it bears repeating, especially during the holiday season. It's the same with our partner, our family, right? There's so many reasons to love them, but there are also things that we don't love. But if you're constantly pushing against the things you don't love, constantly wishing that something that is the case was different, then you're going to be fighting a losing battle and you're going to be focusing on the negative rather than embracing that space or that person holistically. So Chrissy, this is a galley kitchen. Just embrace it. The other thing that troubles me about turning part of it into a countertop is that when you're in a galley kitchen and you don't have room for a peninsula or an island, what you're doing when you have a countertop is you're forcing somebody to look at the wall because you didn't tell me there's an opening to say the living room and this is not an L-shaped countertop or anything like that. So when they're sitting there eating their breakfast, when they're sitting there, you know, reading the paper, having a coffee, 
they're staring at a wall, which makes it less interesting to sit there and makes it somewhat awkward to sit with other people, right? Because then you're just frogs on a log staring at a wall. So I want you to consider not making it into seating and instead having that additional storage because you mentioned that you've got a family that's growing by leaps and bounds and this kitchen is a nice generous size but if you need storage if you see that you're a little maxed out I think you would get more bang for your buck with additional cabinetry than you would get with an isolated space for a kid to eat their Cheerios while staring at a backsplash. You get my drift? Guys, I dish it out. I tell it like I see it. Even during the holiday season, I have to be very frank with you. You guys don't come to me because you want me to affirm all your choices. You come to me because you want my thoughts, and those are my thoughts. All right, everyone, I hope that you are lighting the fire, whether it's in your primary bedroom, your living room, or whether it's just a cozy candle while you watch some of your favorite bad TV. Happy holiday season to you all. I am very excited to announce, those of you who've written me and missed out on the first webinar, that our next webinar, which is The Secrets, three of them, to becoming an interior designer that gets paid, will be taking place January 12th. So mark your calendars now, January 12th at 11 a.m. Eastern time will be our next webinar for those of you who are writing to say that you missed out because we did not record it. It is a live event. So I want you to be there if you're able to make it. And um, there we go. I think that's all I have for you for this week. But I'll be back again next week with more answers to your questions. Till then, bye. A big thank you to Aton and the Embassy who wrote our theme song. A shout out to Catherine Heller who owns the podcast shop and is our editor extraordinaire. We also want to thank Ginny Sunnison and her team at the Savvy Podcast Agency for their help with our social, our YouTube channel, and so much more. We also want to thank Uploft, which is our parent company who supports this podcast. And lastly, we owe a huge debt of gratitude to you. Thank you so much for tuning in and for all your support.